Men, we are desperate for love and acceptance. As soon as we grow up, as when, we're, when we are kids, we want nothing but to be ourselves. But unfortunately, the world does not allow us to be ourselves. We have to be some nearly impossible person. We have to be some perfect soldier, warrior or something for the world or whatever. You're supposed to be born perfect. When literally that's not how society works. Wherever this thing came from, I think it came from simps. I have to blame men. It goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. I have to blame men, honestly. Because we gave women what they want. Quote unquote, more freedom. For them to do whatever they want. And because of that, it, it ended up doing a whole 180 on who's the leader and all that stuff. So next thing you know, men, women have high standards and stuff like that. And men, we can't catch up. And then women wanted to vote. Women wanted to, you know, I guess sleep around. And we gave them all that. And that's fine. I'm fine with women voting. Even though they don't, the most of them vote Democrat. But, well, I'll say, or vote leftistly. I'll say it that way more liberal but anyways I'm fine with women voting and I am accepting well I'll say it this way if women want to sleep around okay no problem go ahead have fun have fun but now women are able to have their fun discover themselves as they like to say which is unfortunately sleeping around Men don't want that. And the men that do end up being played by the women because the women com can't compare the men they're with. They compare the men they're with. <sighs> ah. I don't like talking in front of people sometimes. That's why I just need my own place. My childhood, you know, trauma is the reason why I don't like it. But anyways, um, which I will make a video about my childhood trauma eventually, but I, I want to make sure I show my face whenever I do that. So, yeah. Anyway, so, yeah. So women, there's now sexual liberation, all that stuff. If their whole purpose, if these feminists back in the 60s, purpose is um, to, you know, sexual liberate themselves, okay. And that's fine. They got it now. But it didn't change nothing from men. As men, we wanted... We want... We want to be chivalrous. We want to do everything right. We want to be nice guys. But we can't. Because the women... Want these... Chads and Tyrones. Is this snowing? I'm saying something fall from the sky. But anyways... Yeah, so they want all these Chads and Tyrones. I'm pretty sure back in the 60s they existed. I'm not going to pretend like it don't. So now they're doing the whatever. And it's fine. So now as men, the men that's left over, which did exist in the 60s, it was just very less likely because somebody always has somebody, specifically during their high school days, um, in the 60s to be exact, but yeah Men were able to get married and get sex more often back in the 60s, but now today Oh my gosh Men we do anything for females attention for love. I Think We do anything for females attention for acceptance by society Unfortunately the government panders towards women and what they want. Ever since we gave women what they want. Society. Basically has gone on a decline. I'm not saying. Women are the problem. At least for the most part. I'm not going to pretend like. I'm not going to lie now. I'm just saying. God put men in the lead for a reason. We need to have some. Sort of control. Over women's lives. 
I know that sounds very misogynistic, and for the record, the definition of misogyny is hatred for women. I don't hate women, okay? God forbid. Because if I did, I literally would have been gay. But I'm literally not. Anyways, God put as men as they God put men in the leadership for a reason. We still have our leadership, but it's just corrupt. That's all. Anyways, us men, we do we're just so desperate for life. So being, you know, love and stuff. When we're back in school, trying to be ourselves. Oh no, this isn't cool. You gotta do this. You gotta do that. So then we start doing that. Specifically from other females, when we're trying to wow a girl, being a nice guy and stuff like that, it ain't working. Oh, you're not like this person. Oh, you're not like this person. So we start acting like them, and then all of a sudden the women start to switch up. Sometimes, and even if that even if that was the case, oh, you don't have this. You don't give me this. You don't give me that. It's just a whole lot of stuff. Like we 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 try to be ourselves. And we just don't, we're not allowed to be ourselves. We're, we're supposed to be this whole prepackaged thing. Robot. Honestly, when it comes to doing what giving us, doing what's, hold up. I had to give me some water. When it comes to us men, Every single time we do what society says, it always screw us over. Always. For the most part, it always screw us over. And people can't seem to understand that. Every single time everything goes wrong, society wanna be like, oh, no, you did something wrong. So get good, get your head in the game and all the other junk. It's just stupid. Uh, let's speak on my experience. Growing up, I was bullied because because the quote I quote unquote looked poor, and then on top of that, I was Christian. On top of that, as a Christian, we're automatically going to get bullied. There's no ifs, ands, or buts with that. So I'm gonna give that the 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 um. I'm not gonna say all clear, but as far as Jesus speaking. Um, I'm gonna say give it the all clear, but socially speaking, I'm gonna give it the pass. But yeah, growing up, I was not accepted, and I was very desperate for acceptance from everybody I love, outside the house and in. By my by my, my childhood family at the time, I really wanted to be accepted for liking. The things I like, like Sonic, to be exact, because that was something so big. Video games and all that stuff. And I was always made fun of for always talking about Sonic and only Sonic. And cartoons and stuff like that when I was a kid. Why don't you like this? Why don't you like that? Men like this. Men like fights. Men like wrestling. Men like sports. And all that extra shit. Great. Why don't you start hanging out with the guys? Why don't you start doing what the guys doing? The guys wasn't interested in what I was doing. And that day, when I brought Bomberman Jetters, it was like, I think it was like 2009. Yeah, I think it was 2009. When I discovered um, Bomberman Jetters. I'm not going to get into the story of that because my granddad was involved to how... I end up discovering Bomberman Jetters. But it's rest in peace to him. Love him very much. Anyways, hope to see him again. As a matter of fact, I did see him like a few months ago, earlier this year, in my dream. So I won't get too much of that. And speaking of dreams, I will get into dream content eventually. One of those dreams I'm working on animating for my other channel, Sally the Ray Plays. So yeah. So link in the description for that. Subscribe to that. Anyways, off topic. So yeah, Bomberman Jetters. I discovered that game, and then around 2009, that was the peak. It went my, you know, oh my gosh, this is so cool. 
I'm really liking Bomberman. I was the only one in the house playing that game. Um, because I was the only one interested, and that's fine. So, obviously, I was desperate for other people, my siblings, my child siblings, to play it, which they didn't. I mean, they occasionally did. I'm not going to sit there and lie. But, you know, the interest was just not there, which is fine. Um, but I remember at one point I was feeling like unaccepted because I was constantly playing that Bomberman Jetters game and Sonic game while they played the wrestling games WWF at the time man I, I think the WWE was a thing before then but you know what I mean to me childhood is WWF I don't know if any of you people remember that but anyways yeah WWF at the time, WrestleMania, and all those games for the GameCube and stuff like that. They was playing, so like watching all these fighting stuff, and they was kind of looking down on me, not really accepting the the person I was when I was a kid, not really finding interest in violent content. Honestly, that's kind of what it is. I'm not gonna sit there and lie, fighting this violent content. That's the nature of fighting. Somebody gonna get hurt. Somebody gonna get bruised. Somebody gonna get bleeding. That's just the way it is. So technically speaking, I'm not wrong. It is somewhat violent content. Anyways, even while Power Man Jetters, you're literally blowing, blowing up people. So there's that. So I don't want to be a hypocrite. But anyways, you get the point. One is more realistic. So I was unaccepted for the way how I was as a kid through my modern family. And school, oh my gosh, bullies. For quote unquote looking poor, being Christian, not acting like them, like swearing and stuff. Because back then, don't get me wrong, I was I was a bit really religious back in the day. I, was, I don't think for the most part I was saying people was going to hell. I don't think so because, yeah. The point is, back then I was indeed more religious back in my childhood days. In my childhood era. All of them. Um, yeah. Um, so I did kind of preach that a little bit, so I would understand that, why they didn't like me, but still though, that's life as a Christian. Anyways, with all the Christian stuff aside, they did not like the fact I did not want to talk like them. I wasn't them. I was unacceptable for the way I was, you know, not speaking gang-like, um, street-like or whatever, um, not speaking Spanish. Yep, that too, so a bit of racism. What else? Um, the way I dress it, because my mom did all the dressing back in the day. My childhood mom, childhood mother. She did all that. And they didn't like that. And then on top of that, I had a specific bully. And it was a lot of it was just a bunch of shit, you know. That that and all that, you know, even growing up all the way till now. I said that weird. Now past all the bullying stuff. I'm a grown man now and all that. Well, I don't like saying I'm a grown man. I'm an adult now. Full adult. 24 years old. Um, I feel unaccepted by my modern family. By the way how I am. Especially by my modern parents. One of them to be exact. Me liking video games, cartoons, and all that stuff. Over some sports. I don't care if that's what men do. I don't care. I do whatever I want as a man. I don't care. So yeah, I feel unaccepted by my modern family. Pretty much all of my modern family. Honestly. Because, like I said, I'm starting to isolate myself from my modern family. Because everything I have to say... It's just the interest is just not there. Like, what I have to say is a task. And if I remember correctly, I would have sworn one of my modern parents wrote their eye every single time I talk about, you know, the science fiction and stuff like that. Because I love science fiction. Now, as far as my science stuff, that, that was accepted. That was probably the only nerdy thing for me that was accepted. My love for science. Like chemicals, especially out of space, even though that doesn't exist anymore. I'll get into flat earth content eventually. Speaking of which, watch, watch my... Um, um, the first installment of my come out video. So yeah, that that is related to Flatter, so that's why. Anyways. Um, yeah, so I was accepted for my signs, but 
As far as my other stuff I was interested in, like Sonic and video games, cartoons, no, I was not. Because I didn't, I didn't play sports. I didn't really like sports and all that stuff. So I was unaccepted for that. I was unaccepted for the way how I handle situations and stuff like that. So, yeah. What else? Now, let's get to the love topic. I'm going to have to end up changing this video title because I'm not talking about men being desperate. But let's get to that. But I, I was desperate for their love and attention, being actually interested in the stuff I was interested in. And when pe members of my childhood family was the origin of why I liked things I like. The, the beginning ship of my childhood family started in, I believe, 2005. For minimal. I would have to check my board. Because I gotta, I, I had to actually write it down. I determined that my life era is based off when I graduated from um, um, elementary school. But anyways, so yeah, then what I was talking about. Yeah, my child family was established in 2005, and I didn't know about Sonic the Hedgehog. I only knew about Mario because I remember seeing my biological mom at the time. Um, playing Mario 64 and I thought I played it a little so technically my very first console was an N64 it wasn't my console because my biological mother was playing it but yeah anyway so yeah um it's thanks to my childhood family my childhood parents coming coming to into fruition and that you know they intertwine a family it's thanks to them my childhood family's childhood family as to why I started liking Sonic a bunch. Apparently, to one of my childhood siblings, I said as a six, five or six year old, when my childhood childhood sibling, older childhood sibling said was playing Sonic Heroes, apparently to one of my immediate my um no not my immediate my um childhood families uh, siblings childhood siblings, I said apparently, oh wow, um he run real real fast so that's the, my whole that's the origin story of my Sonic so Sonic Heroes oh yeah it definitely has to be 2004 because Sonic that's when Sonic Heroes was released alright I'm calling it 2004 late 2004 is when I'm calling it and it was cold outside so I, I think I remember because I remember when, when I moved into my um, um, house of 2014 anyway so yeah, so that's they're the origin story to why I like the things I like. So, and then growing up, I, I wasn't accepted for that. So, yeah, so I was desperate for all of their attention for that. Um, and yeah, what else? My love life, which I don't have, obviously. I never had a girlfriend for the most part. Um, I've liked probably, a, a, man, how many girls? I don't know. Probably more than I can count. I can remember a, a minimum of 10 girls, okay? A minimum of 10 girls in my life. And obviously, they all rejected me. They have every right to. Don't get me wrong. One of them said, like, I don't like black boys. I hope she meant it as, like, I'm not attracted to black boys. But anyways, anyway, so. Well, thanks to my, thanks to one of my um, younger childhood siblings. So, yeah, anyways. Um, anyways, so, yeah. I was desperate, you know. For love and stuff like that. I'm going to have to make that another video. Because I end up getting a real sidetrack. Um, maybe after the title of this. I was desperate. For acceptance or something like that. You know. I as a man was desperate, desperate for acceptance. So yeah. So yeah. I wanted to be accepted by you know. Females in school. Um, specifically the ones I liked. Obviously the ones I liked. Thought I was like. Ill. Il Ray Marco, Il Ray Marco the weird kid, and all that other junk. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it, you know. I, I was pretty desperate for, um, you know, love and attention and stuff like that. Um, I know I deviated from the original video's plan, but, you know, I have an idea for that. Hey, another video. Another video I can record. Alright, so there it is. Uh, that's pretty much it. My little experience. I, I was desperate for... You know, being socially accepted when in school and stuff like that, when dating and like that. Um, yeah, I was socially accepted. Was not socially accepted in school because of my Sonic stuff. 
and my the way how I acted. I didn't become socially accepted until seventh grade. Why? Because I decided, you know what, I'm gonna start cursing. And when I did, everybody started to like me. Females even started to find me attractive. The girls who were mean to me started to find me attractive all of a sudden. Bullshit. Obviously, I was, you know, liking the attention a little, but there's that part. I hate that. I had to act like the enemy. Not necessarily the enemy, but I had to act like act like an asshole and act like a sinner and every and all that stuff. Um, cursing and all that stupid stuff. I had to act all like that to be accepted by society. I was so desperate, I decided to let go and start let go of my purity of a pure mouth and start cursing. Now the love story, that's a whole nother story that I honestly don't want to get into because I could have gotten serious trouble. I'm not saying I, you know, actually harass any women, but practically speaking, because I wasn't aware of certain behaviors I as a man shouldn't be doing, you know, it's it could be equated as that. I don't really want to talk about the point is I didn't harass any females, okay? It's just my flirting could have been a bit dialed back. See look, my family had no support. My childhood family had no support. I didn't have no role model growing up. So therefore, I didn't, you know, I didn't know how to really approach girls the right way. So yeah, specifically in seventh grade. Everything else before seventh grade, sixth, um, seventh and under was all nothing but living hell, okay? I was not really approaching girls like that because they all thought they were mean to me and I pretty much gave up on all of them. Which is a good thing I did. I'm glad I gave up on them all because I don't want any of them, nah. uh I want probably a max of like, I don't know, one girl from one girl from my childhood school, elementary school. And she didn't come until seventh grade. Pause. Sorry. I didn't mean it that way. But you know what I'm trying to say. But yeah. And I didn't she was a new student in seventh grade. And conveniently I thought she was the most prettiest woman in the class. And for the record. I'm not going to talk no much. Anyway, so that's pretty much it, you know. I was, you know, desperate for attention. That's my little story of being desperate for being accepted, you know, by my child. I was very desperate as a little boy. And even during my teen years, I somewhat was a little bit desperate. I was more desperate for my family's attention. Because that's when my childhood family, uh, starting childhood family 2015 is when everything starts to really go downhill. We was already going down here once my grandfather died. But the family's mental mind started to go to shit in 2014, late 2014 to be exact. I'm gonna say September 2018. Yeah. Yep, yeah, September 2018. That's when my child family started to act like assholes. Yeah, for real. That's for sure. I really was trying to be, feel accepted, especially when I was going to, to high school. And I wish I kept my mouth shut saying I had a bunch of gay friends, which, spoiler alert, I didn't. I had one gay friend and one bi friend. The gay friend was obviously a lesbian. You know how lesbianism works. And I was part of a geek squad, and obviously they couldn't accept that. And we was very religious at that time as well. I'm sorry, my family, my childhood family was very religious. I guess God saw all that. Well, obviously he saw all that. He saw all that and decided to reveal things slowly, one way or another, and allow certain things to happen to, you know, allow my fam my childhood family to break up. I wish we were still together, but if that's the will of God, which I highly doubt, but what, I think God would do whatever he, it takes to make sure we all make it to his kingdom. So if he, he'd break up a family, I feel like God would break up a family just to make sure we all at least go to enter his kingdom. So I'm getting off topic, but you get the point. You know, high school, that's the part where I wasn't really accepted. I was desperate, for, somewhat desperate, but I was starting to give up around high school. 2018, um, my 2018 high school, um, you know, I was, I guess, trying to be accepted by my biological family, that's for sure, but they wasn't giving me any slack. They wasn't treating me right. They wasn't accepting me. I was desperately more desperate because I wanted to, you know, bond with my actual biological father, but that didn't happen. 
But you know, because we had issues then. But we're, 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 me and my biological father, we good now. We real cool. I call it newfound love for my biological father. I'm not changing my last name now. I'm keeping his last name. That's for sure. I'm going to pass it on. So there you go, my dad. Love you very much. Anyways. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, 19, 2019, everything was cool, I guess. Um, that was probably the most peaceful year. Yeah, 2020. I wasn't accepted for my ways of, you know, handling things. What else? 2021 through now, I'm not really accepted. And I'm somewhat desperate for attention from even a social life. I was desperate for a social life when I was a kid. And even I'm somewhat now, I, I wish, really wish I had that social life. I'm not willing to do anything to get it. Because I understand as a man, I need to, you know, get, get myself together. But I don't know. That's pretty much it, you know. As far as now, I'm not desperate really for anything. I get the feeling of desperation, especially for love. Because I've never gotten that. I've never really felt a touch of a woman. I've been thinking about that a lot all day. I'm tired of seeing pretty girls on Instagram. Because it's nothing but a tease. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. I don't know what else to say. I, that's my story of being a little bit of desperate. Of being unaccepted. Of wanting to be accepted. Accept yourself. That's all you need to do. Because at least, at least Jesus is there. At least God is there. At least Jesus is here with us. The Holy Spirit. As long as God is with us. That's all we really need. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe.